Videographer, we're back on the record at 10.27. All right, Miss G, you testified that you first became aware that you, your employment at Marilego, began in 2000, in mid-2015, correct? Mr. Edwards, objection, mischaracterizes her testimony. I don't know exactly when. It could be towards the end of 2015. It could be towards the beginning of 2016. I just know that I've learned about it recently. I'm not too sure exactly what day I did learn about it. Okay, but to your mind, it's been within the last six to 12 months. Is that fair? I wouldn't say 12 months, no. I would just say up until. I don't know when I was shown that, when I actually first saw it, but it wasn't a year ago. Saw your employment records from Marilego. Correct. Okay, I'm going to show you an exhibit marked as Defendant's Exhibit 13. Exhibit 13 marked. Okay, all right. Miss G, do you recognise this document? Yes, I do. What is this document? This is a resume that I created myself. All right, and what address did you put at the top of your resume? Blank, blank. And when did you live at that address? I believe from 2013 to 2014. Okay, and you said you created this document, correct? Yes. And did you send it out to any employers? Do you have any attachment that this goes with to say that I have? Because I'm not too sure, I've created a lot of resumes. Okay, and hold on, I'll see if we do. Miss Menninger, all right, I'll mark this next as Defendant's Exhibit 14. Exhibit 14 marked. Thank you. All right, do you recognise this document? Yes. What is this document? This is me replying to ads for jobs. Okay, and you were communicating with by your email, correct? Yes. All right, and I apologise. This one actually has the resume attached to an email. Mm-hmm. Do you see that towards the back of the document? Okay, so, sorry. To whom, to whom, with whom were you communicating about a job at this time? Well, on the very top, Phil or Gary, and that was for a bartending position. Okay. Mm hmm. Was that something your brother had recommended or your father? I don't know who. You know, I just looked at that. That's kind of why I giggled. I don't know why my brother, that's my brother. That's the way we talk to each other. Hi, stupid head. Good luck, smelly. Kiss hug, kiss hug, kiss hug, kiss hug. Sissy. He's my little brother, so you have to understand we kind of play around. But subject to my resume for hospitality, I'm not too sure why he would have gotten it. But apparently he did. Okay, and you see that your resume was attached to an email communication you had with your brother. Yes, I do. Right, and that's also your brother was part of the email chain with respect to an ad placed on Craigslist for a position, correct? He was on, let me just check the dates then. Sure. 1st of the 20th, 2014. 1st the 21st, so just within a day of each other, yes? All right, and then the resume that's attached is the address you were living at in January. Yes. Of 2014, correct? Correct. All right, so you believe you created the resume that's attached to Defendant's Exhibit 14, correct? Correct. And you sent it out with respect to this employment you saw on Craigslist, correct? Correct. And you are the one who put into this document the contents of the resume, right? Yes. All right, Mr. Edwards, we're talking about the resume that's attached to Exhibit 14, right? Ms. Manager, we are. Mr. Edwards, okay, got it. Ms. Manager, thank you for clarifying. Mr. Edwards, got it. Ms. Manager, although I don't know there are any differences with Defendant's Exhibit 13. Just to be safe, you believe the one attached to Defendant's Exhibit 14 is the one that you sent. There are differences, isn't there? Yes, there is. Okay, what are the differences that you know? 
It starts, I mean, let me see, the very top introduction is the same. Uh -huh. After the experience, uh -huh. that changes, the dates change. And then underneath employment, training, recruitment is Indigo Bar and Grill on Exhibit 14. On Exhibit 13, it's Manway Logistics underneath employment, training, recruitment. And then underneath Manway Logistics on Exhibit 13 is mar lago Resort and Spa. And on Exhibit 14 is Gemma Catering Wedding Reception. So there is quite a few differences. OK, great. Do you have any idea when you sent out Defendant's Exhibit 13, or if you did, to an employer? Unless you have something that's attached to it, I can't be sure that I did. OK. Is the content in Defendant's Exhibit 14 that you believe you sent out to an employer correct? Unfortunately, I have to tell you that they are not correct. Through my experience, I was in the mindset that I was unemployable. I had been abused for many years and I was told by a job agency that I need to show that I've consistently worked at various places and given experience. So it's not something that I'm proud of, but I have had to plump up my resume to make it look as though I could be employed. What do you mean by plump up your resume? Well, I couldn't... I didn't feel that I could go to an employer and tell them that I had held, you know, one job in the last 10 to 12 years and before that I was trafficked for the purpose of sex. And that's definitely something you don't want to put down on your resume, which makes you quite highly unemployable. So I did add places in such as Indigo Bar and Grill, Calmio, Flamenco Bar and Restaurant. Wait, wait, which one? On Exhibit 14. Mm-hmm. Underneath experience, the dates are all incorrect as well. It's just to show that I was consistently working, which I was not, and I needed a job to help my family. I've got a family of five. So like I said, it's not something proud that I had to do, but I felt it was the only way that I could actually get employed. You lied on your resume. I made it look as though I had continuously worked throughout the years, so that way an employer would see me as a potential candidate. Okay, well, let's start with employment, training and recruitment, ET Australia. Did you work at that place of employment? I did work there. What dates did you actually work there? I know I finished working for, we call it ET Australia, so if you don't mind me abbreviating it, however you want. I know I finished there in January of 2006, right before my son was born, my first son was born. And I believe I worked there for a year. I believe so. It might have been a little bit over a year, but just around a year. All right, so you worked at a place for about a year and your resume, you typed that you worked there for nine years, correct? Correct. And you did that, correct? I did. Nobody else typed that for you? No, I did it myself. All right, and the next employment you list here well, is your job description accurate? Yes, that is actually accurate. Okay, and everything in there is what you actually did? Yes, for ET Australia. Okay, Indigo Bar and Grill, did you type that in? I did type that in. And did you actually work at Indigo Bar and Grill? No, I did not. All right, so the dates that you put on your resume are not true, correct? That's correct. The title of your job at that place was not correct. You didn't work there, right? I never worked there. The description that you typed out about the things that you did at the Indigo Bar and Grill is made up, correct? Well, it's, it's generally what you would do if you were a server or a waitress. But like I said, I did not work at Indigo Bar and Grill. So when you represented to an employer that you were applying for a job that you had done these things, you had not actually done these things at Indigo Bar and Grill, correct? Not at Indigo Bar and Grill, no. All right, can you read the first sentence of your job description for Indigo Bar and Grill? Right. At this restaurant located inside of an RSL, we were never slow. Okay, so when you said we were never slow, you just made that up, correct? Mr. Edwards, form. 
I tried to give as much information to my potential employer to show that I could handle a large amount of pressure on guests. So yes, I put that in there. But you represented you were there working as a server or waitress and that we were never slow. That is not true, correct? Well, I never worked there, so it's, again, I was very highly unemployable given my past. So I did whatever I could to make it look as though my potential employer could hire me. Okay, you described your duties that were not, those were fictional duties, correct? They were duties that a waitress and a server would do, but you did not do at Indigo Bar. But I did not do them at Indigo Bar and Grill. Okay, you described your energetic service and your service with a smile to the guests. That was not true, correct? Everything in Indigo Bar and Grill is not correct. And you created that entire description, correct? For the sole purpose of being able to obtain employment, yes. To get money. Mr Edwards form. To make a wage for my family. All right, the next job, Gemma Catering and Wedding Receptions. Did it, is that a job that you actually held? I did actually work there. I don't know the dates, but I was a server, waitress and bartender. March of 2003 to April 2004, is that about when you worked there? It could be very close to it, I'm not too sure. You're not sure? No, I'm not sure. Did you have children? Had you already had children at the time you worked there? No, I do not believe I did. I became a stay-at-home mum when I had my first child. And what year was that? 2006. Okay, so you believe you worked at Gemma Catering and Wedding Receptions before 2006? I believe so. And other than that, you can't recall what dates you worked there. I'm sorry, I couldn't help, no. All right, and then what were your actual, is that your actual job that you had there? The description of it? The title, server, waitress, bartender? Yes. All right, is the description accurate? To a T. What's that? To a T. Okay, the next job you list is Manway Logistics, Logistics Receptionist. Is that a job you actually held? It is a job I held. And when did you hold it? Again, I'm very bad at dates, I'm not too sure. All right, approximately when did you have it? I don't want to speculate and give you the wrong answer, so I'm not too sure. Did you have children at the time you worked there? No. So before 2006? Yes. And after you moved to Australia, which was what year? I moved to Australia at the end of 2002, I believe. All right, do you recall going to work shortly after you got to Australia? Yes. How I had to obtain my my ability to work there, so I think that took a couple of months. You can get a temporary visa that allows you to work while you're waiting for your permanent resident status, and that's what we did. All right. Were you able to apply for that temporary job permission before you actually got married in Australia? I got married in... We were married in Thailand, really, but we made it official in January of 2003, and within a couple of weeks, I was granted the permission to work in Australia legally. Okay, so to the best of your recollection, you got permission to work in Australia sometime in the spring of 2003. Mr Edwards, form. That's actually summer over there. Fair enough, the first quarter of the year, calendar year. Yes. 2003. If we're going to be politically correct, yes. That's what you recall. I'm sorry, yes. And is your description of Manway Logistics correct? Yes. All right, and how long did you work there? I think that was less than a year that I worked there. I would approximate about six, seven months. Can you name one co-worker you had or boss or anybody else that worked there? 
I know her name started with an M, but I can't remember. I remember what she looks like. I just don't remember her name. Okay, and how much did you make there? I don't remember the exact amount. Approximately about $20 an hour, I think. And how many months per week were you working for that six months to a year? I believe that was full time. And is full time the same in Australia? Yeah, it's a 40 hour week. Okay. Well, 38 because you get two hours of lunch, so yes. All right, have you been in touch with anyone from that employment in a while? No. All right, the next job listed there is what? Calmeo Flamenco Bar and Restaurant. Is that some place you actually worked? No, it's not. Is that a place that actually exists? I don't really know. All right. I mean, I think I looked on the internet and found something similar to what the description I was needing to fill, and that was it. Okay, so when you were creating this document in 2013, 2014, right, that's when you had the Titsville address. Yes. All right, you went on the internet and you searched for a place that would be like the job you were looking for. Correct. And you found the name of an actual place, Calmeo Flamenco Bar and Restaurant. Did I get that correct? I'm not 100% on that, but I think so. Okay, and you did that in order to impress the employer you were applying for here in the email, correct? Correct. All right, and you did that in order to get money from a job that you hoped to get from this employer in the email, correct? I was hoping to gain employment and not having much experience, I put in there that I had experience. Okay, and you said that you had been advised to plump up your resume by a job agency, is that right? Yes. What was the name of that job agency? Uh, before I worked at ET Australia, I was actually a job seeker there. And a job seeker, I don't know if you're familiar with the term, somebody who is looking for work and you go to a job agency and you go look on the computer and you actually have somebody who helps you find employment and they are the ones who recommend that you show that you've continuously worked throughout your years. They ended up really liking me, so that's how I got the job there. Okay, was it a particular person there that gave you the advice to plump up your resume? It would have been one of the counsellors. Which one? I don't know. Okay, do you remember the names of any of the counsellors? I only remember the name of one of the girls I worked with, but I don't remember. I don't remember anyone else's name. When did you first become a job seeker at ET Australia? Well, if I finished there in 2006 and I worked there for approximately a year, it would have been 2005, late 2004, 2005. I'm not too sure. Okay, so you were a job seeker there first and then got employment there, right? Yes. Okay, so the advice to plump up your resume was while you were seeking a job or while you were employed there? While I was seeking a job. All right, and you were assigned a counsellor? Yes. One or more than one? It changes on a daily basis. There's somebody who comes into the office and they sit with you and they help you with your resume. And then they help you go on the computer and look for open vacancies. So someone in approximately 2005 gave you the advice to plump up your resume, that's what you're saying. To make it look like I've continuously worked, yes. Okay, so back to Calmeo Flamenco Bar and Restaurant, which is a place you found on the internet but did not actually work. Is that the dates for your employment there? December 2001 to February 2003, not true, correct? Obviously, yes. At that time, I was, during 2001, I was with Jeffrey and Ghislaine being trafficked. Mm-hmm. So you were not working at Calmeo Flamenco Bar? Obviously not, yes. And you said you got to Australia in late 2002 and did not work there between late 2002 and February of 2003, correct? I've never worked at Calmeo Flamenco Bar and Grill, period. All right, and the job description that you crafted there is also fictional, correct? Yes. 
All right, and Marilego Resort and Spa, you put down as a place you had worked, correct? Correct. And you typed in August 2000 to September 2001, correct? Correct. And you created your job description there, correct? Correct. All right, and then turning to the last page, you have your education, correct? Can I just make a statement to say that, again, with the Marilego Resort and Spa, I did have to add dates to make it look as though I had continuously worked. So those, again, are incorrect dates. But it is a date that you typed into a resume in 2013 or 2014. That is the date that, if you could just let me finish my question, sure. That is a date that you typed into your resume in 2013 or 2014, correct? That is the date that I did type in but those are incorrect dates. All right. And as well as the position organizing, making and canceling appointments for massage therapists. All right. I mean, I was their locker room attendant. I just wanted it to sound like I had more receptionist experience than I did. You wanted it to look like you had more experience than you had had, correct? That's what you just said. Correct, I mean, Given that my past had not enabled me to be able to look for work, or I wasn't able to put down what I actually had, had to do in my past, so I made it look as though I was able to be employed. You did not have the past that you thought the employer was looking for, right? I couldn't put down on there that I was sex trafficked for a couple of years and did not have the experience to be able to apply for jobs and provide for my family. So this is something that I said. Again, I'm not proud of, but I felt was necessary to do to be able to gain employment. All right, so you were applying for a job at a restaurant, right? At this, according to the front email, yes. All right, and you did not put down Taco Bell on this resume, correct? No. The only jobs on here are the ones that we have mentioned. Right, and so why did you choose August of 2000 as your start date for Marilego? It just looks as though I've given them a long-standing history of employment. You chose a month. Why did you choose that month? I chose months and dates for every single position on that resume. There is no specific reason why I chose that month. It was just purely to show that I was continuously employed. On the last page, it has some education. Which part of that is untrue? Objection. I received my business admin certificate three from ET Australia. I've never held responsible service of alcohol and gambling. Do you understand that to be a licensing of some sort or a class or what do you understand that? In Australia, you have to have something called an RSA and RCG to be able to work as a waitress or bartender or anything. And I didn't know if it was the same out here in America. So I put down that I had. I had taken a CPR and first aid. I don't remember when, but it's not current. And I did go to Royal Palm Beach High School and I didn't put down a good degree there or anything. So is it fair to say you never worked as a waitress in Australia? Is that what you just said? I did work as a waitress at Gemma Catering. Oh, okay. I don't believe I needed my RSA to work there. I'm not too sure. All right, and if I could just ask you one other question about Gemma Catering. In the last line of the job description, it says, this job was a second job. I would work in the evenings and weekends for saving extra cash. What was it a second job to? If my time period is right, it would be my second job to Manway Logistics because they were both. Gemma Catering and Manway Logistics were both in Sydney, whereas ET Australia was on the Central Coast. All right, ET Australia is on the Central Coast. Correct. And Gemma and Manway are in Sydney. In Sydney, yeah. All right, got it. Do you know if those two organisations still exist? Manway, I would definitely say... It's, it's a large logistic company. I would say it still does exist. Gemma Catering, I'm not too sure if that exists anymore or not. Okay. All right, so did you spend your 16th birthday with Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein? 
No, I was 16 when I met them. Now that I know the correct date, so I would have spent my 17th birthday with them. So when you represented that you spent your 16th birthday with Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein, that was not true, correct? At my ability at the time, that's what I believed to be true. It wasn't until I found the mar lago record stating the year 2000. Me being born in 1983 would make me turning 17 that year. So please describe for me your 17th birthday that you claim you spent with Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. I remember spending a birthday with them on Jeffrey Epstein's island called Little St. Jets. I wouldn't say it was a party, it was just Ghislaine, me, Jeffrey. I believe Blank was there. I got some presents from them. What presents did you get? Ghislaine gave me a whole bunch of makeup, like boxes of different kinds of eyeshadows and lipsticks and just makeup altogether. Jeffrey gave me a bracelet and, I think, earrings. What kind of earrings? They were what I believed to be diamonds. I don't know what they exactly were. I think Jeffrey was talking about they could have been passed off as good knockoffs, but they appeared to be diamonds. Any other presents? I remember the makeup and the jewellery. I don't remember much else. And that was your 17th birthday, you said. Mr Edwards' form. It's hard for me to really pinpoint exactly which birthday it was. So it could have been your 18th or your 19th. I don't want to lock down on which exact birthday it could have been without knowing. You don't know which birthday it was, is that what you're saying? The one that I'm specifically telling you about. Right, you don't know which one. No. All right, do you remember spending more than one birthday with Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell? Yes. Okay, tell me about the other ones that you remember. Well, I know my 19th birthday. I can't remember really my 18th birthday, but my 19th birthday, we celebrated it early, earlier than my actual date of birth. And that's when he surprised me with tickets to Thailand. What do you mean he surprised you with tickets to Thailand? He told me that the tickets for Thailand were for my birthday. Did he hand you something that looked like a ticket to Thailand? What do you mean? He didn't hand me the tickets at that time, but he told me that he had booked me in for a massage training at an institute in Chiang Mai. And he told you he had booked you tickets to a massage training in Chiang Mai, Thailand, sometime before your actual 19th birthday. Mr Edwards' form. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay, did he hand you, excuse me, hand you anything at that time? No, I don't think so. And where were you located when he told you this about the Thailand trade massage training? Jeffrey, Ghislaine and I had just gone scuba, not scuba diving, not with the big tanks, but snorkeling with just the mask and the two piece. And on Jeffrey's Island, by the way, and we had gone out for a while and we had come back and he's got a pier where it's got a ladder and you climb up and we were wearing wetsuits so we were taking off our flippers and our wetsuits and all of our gear and they said they wanted to sit down and talk to me just the three of us and he first he told me about the if I could just stop you I think I asked where were you oh I'm sorry when you had this conversation about the just the island. I'm just trying to describe the instance that he gave it to me. Ah, okay. It was on the island, on the pier, in the Caribbean. Okay, and it was some time before your 19th birthday. Correct. How much time before? I don't know, a couple, six weeks, a couple of months, I don't know. Close to my birthday. It was my birthday present, that's what he told me. Okay, so you don't know when you had this conversation. Mr Edwards' form. I mean, I know I didn't record the time and the day, so I can only speculate. It was shortly before my birthday, but not my birthday. Okay, and he told you he had booked you tickets to go to Thailand, correct? Right? Correct. All right, so you remember one birthday at which you received makeup, bracelets and earrings and one birthday at which you received tickets to Thailand. Do you remember any other birthdays that you spent with Jeffrey Epstein and or Ghislaine Maxwell? 
I'm sure there is, but I honestly can't remember what I did for my 18th birthday. Okay, well, I'm sorry, did you know for sure that the bracelet, earrings and makeup were from your 17th birthday? Or do you know? I don't know. But you know they were not for your 16th birthday, correct? Correct. All right, if I could have you go back to Defendant's Exhibit 1, I think. Defendant's, sorry, Exhibit 1? Uh -huh. Page 9, either at the bottom or in the upper right-hand corner. Do you see that page? Page 9 of 27, yes. All right, and paragraph 23, do you see that paragraph? I see the paragraph. All right, I was just going to read it over quickly. By all means. I've read it. And the sentence defendant and Ms Maxwell acknowledged and celebrated Planty's 16th birthday is not a true statement, correct? Only upon learning about the fact that I just found out my records. I assumed at the time it was my 16th birthday, but now we know different. You admit as you sit here today that defendant and Ms Maxwell did not celebrate your 16th birthday with you, correct? Correct. 